Hello. Um, I just wanted to take this time to address the recent events that are happening all over the world. Um, this shit is really, like, been weighing heavy on my mind, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, as a black man, I wanted to, you know, at least try to do my part to, like, you know, help out the protesters that are out there. Um, yeah, and, uh, of course I'm speaking in regards to, uh, you know, the people who are protesting the murder of George Floyd. Um, although there, you know, have been, you know, several other murders within recent history, such as Breonna Taylor, uh, Ahmaud Arbery, and Tony McDade, um, I feel like George Floyd is, um, I don't know, I guess the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, um, you know what I mean, the black community has been losing so many people you know, within recent history, and, you know, I guess seeing the footage of George Floyd just being killed broad daylight by the police, even though he was, like, begging for his fucking life, you know what I mean, I guess that's what's really set people off, um, at first I think, you know, the protest started off in Minneapolis, and then, uh, excuse me, a lot of people, you know, followed in their footsteps and, you know, all types of riots, looting and acts of arson, you know, had uh, sparked off, you know, all over the world, you know, not just in America because, you know, I know, I think Japan was protesting at one point. I think New Zealand might have been protesting at one point, and I know France is protesting, and I think I just recently found out France protests had just turned violent. And uh, France in particular, they were, uh, I'm not sure on the details of France, but I believe that they were protesting George Floyd, but they were also protesting a similar situation with a black man, you know, in their community in France that um, ended up dying by the police you know, in a similar fashion, where I think they said, like, there was, like, a whole bunch of police officers, like, sitting on his chest or some shit, and he ended up, like, suffocating and dying. Um, I understand that, uh, you know, a lot of people are kind of upset about, you know, the rioting and the looting and the arson and the violence. Um, and I'm only saying this in, uh, in regards to, you know, the African-American community. When I make this video, I'm exclusively speaking to them. Um, because, you know, that's the community that I'm trying to help out. That's the community that I'm from. And that's the community that I feel like will most understand what I'm trying to say. And kind of empathize with my emotions regarding this. Because, like, this has really got me, you know, like... I, I tried to, um, you know, make a video about this earlier, but, you know, I felt like I was, you know, just rambling and I was just so emotionally, like, distraught by this shit that, you know, I felt like I wasn't saying the right things. And I might, you know, add that video that I made earlier to the end of this video. But um, right now what I'm trying to say is that, um, you know, Afri African Americans, like, we have been protesting peacefully for so long. You know what I mean? Like, for centuries. You know what I mean? Even back, you know, in Dr. King's day, which really wasn't that long ago. I think that was late, like maybe 50 to 60 years. You know what I mean? A lot of non-black people like to pretend that slave, that uh, racism and, you know, lynchings and all that was such a long time ago. Like Martin Luther King died 50 years ago, like 50 to 60 years ago. So there are people alive, both black and white, who possibly could have, you know,
contributed to some of those lynchings, especially in the South. You know what I mean? But, you know, we'll get to that later. But, yeah, like, black people have been protesting peacefully for years. You know, and there's only a handful of times where, you know, black people have become so fed up to the point where, you know, where they had to express themselves, you know, violently to get their message across. Like, I believe, like, I've been doing some research to try and, um, to put this video together. And, you know, I apologize if this, um, if this doesn't come out, you know, as factual, please feel free to correct me. But I believe, um, at some point Martin Luther King ended up getting arrested. People started rioting. And, uh, I believe sometime after the riots, uh, which I believe, I think it cost like $47 million worth of damage. And after the riots, they created the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which, you know, banned, uh, what you call it, banned segregation, basically. Any type of racial discrimination was considered against the law after those riots. And, um... In addition to the Rodney King riots, you know what I mean, um, you know, if you're black, you know about what happened to Rodney King and how, you know, they started rioting in L.A. and, you know, attacking white people and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just like black people saw that, you know, white people tried to sweep it under the rug and be like, oh, well, you know, white people saying whatever they usually say, like, oh, what did he do? He... he he clearly did something wrong. You know, maybe he was reaching for something, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know the exact details, but, you know, from the documentaries that I've seen on it, you know, there were a good handful of white people who just didn't give a fuck about Rodney King getting his ass beat. And, you know, that caused black people to, you know, just riot. You know, and I know in the Rodney King situation, there were a few other, you know, situations that kind of led up to you know, the Rodney King riots, but, um, basically what I'm saying is there are only a handful of situations where African Americans have protested violently, you know, due to racial injustice. You know, when Colin, Ka Colin Kaepernick took a knee, you know what I mean? Everybody, everybody was running their fucking mouth, you know what I mean? Everybody like, oh, you know, this, this is this is football, you know, take that shit somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. That was him peacefully protesting. And a lot of people were trying to, like, avert. Like, they were trying to make him taking a knee about something else. They were trying to say, oh, it's about the flag. Oh, he's anti-American. Or, oh, you know, this, that, and the third. Which, even if he was taking a knee because of the flag, because he didn't like the flag, or because he didn't like the, the uh, national anthem, like, even if that was the case, like, he would be justified in that. But, like, I'm not even going to bring that up. Because then people, they're going to try to use that to, you know, criticize what Colin Kaepernick was doing. Colin Kaepernick was taking a knee because it was, it was a protest against police brutality. And he was taking a knee to trying to say, like, you know, America, you know, hasn't been taking, you know, protecting black people or respecting, you know, these injustices that have been happening as of late. So if America's not going to stand for me, I'm not going to stand for America. You know, they're not representing me. They're not protecting me. They're not protecting my community. Then I'm not going to stand for them. That's why he took a knee. It, it had nothing to do with the flag or the national anthem. It was all because of police brutality. You know what I mean? And when he did that, White people all over the world lost their fucking mind, man. And now you're getting upset because people were protesting violently because when we protested peacefully before, you didn't want to hear that shit. You got mad because you wanted to see your fucking football and shit. You know what I mean? So really, like, just shut the fuck up about that, man. You know what I mean? Like, there have been peaceful Black Lives Matter, you know, protests. You know, several of them. You know, I think, I remember there was one situation where people, like, were protesting on the highway. Like, they blocked off the highway, and they, like, um, 
you know, stood in people's way protesting the Black Lives Matter movement. And when people did that, everybody still had complaints. They were like, oh, they're in the way. I'm trying to get to work. I'm trying to get to my daily commute, blah, blah, blah. The whole point of protesting is to disrupt. It's to get in people's way in order to attract attention to what you're protesting to. You know what I mean? But no matter how, no, it doesn't matter what way black people would try to protest. People would still, you know, try to put their two cents in and be like, oh, black people need to do this. Black people, even, uh, e- even other black people will come in with that respectability politics, talk about, oh, black people need to do this, black people need to do that, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like the whole point of a protest is to disrupt, to get attention. You know what I mean? Like, what about that, that situation, um, what was it? I think it was Charlottesville, Virginia, right? Where black people were peacefully protesting, right? I think they were protesting because of a, what was it? I think it was like a statue of like, uh, of, uh, a, a, a general who owned slaves and was fighting for, you know, slavery, like he wanted to maintain slavery. You know, I think he was a, you know, a Confederate war hero and he wanted to keep having slaves. And, you know, black people, they went down there and they peacefully protested, like, hey, take this shit down. This is offensive. You know, this is not, you know, the part of American history that should be celebrated. And when they did that, a bunch of white supremacists showed up saying some anti-Semitic shit. You know what I mean? A bunch of white supremacists showed up trying to fight the police and shit. And then they drove a fucking car, you know, through a crowd of people. That was a peaceful protest. You know what I mean? And then when the president got on the news, you know, he got on camera, you know, taking interviews regarding the situation. All he had to say was, oh, they're not all bad. You know, some of them are nice people, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like when they protest, when white people protest, you know what I mean? Then it's like, oh, they're not all bad people. You know what I mean? But but when black people protest, it's like, oh, you're in the way. Oh, you know, you need to do it this way. You need to do it that way. You need to protest in a way that's convenient for me so I don't have to acknowledge, you know, what the fuck you're protesting about. You know what I mean? Like, they just want to stay in the, like, they're already comfortable. Like, white people, non-black people, you know, and even some other black people, like, they're comfortable in this bullshit. They don't want shit to change. You know what I mean? Because if shit changed, then they're going to have to, like, reflect upon themselves. You know what I mean? And mature as a person. They're comfortable with shit is at. So they rather conform to the shit that's going on right now. And that's real fucked up. That's why people are being so disrespectful to all the people that are out here protesting. You know what I mean? I understand that, you know, some people, they're black-owned businesses that are getting damaged and destroyed and this, that, and the third. You know, and... You know, I would say, I guess, you know, if you can, if you're out there protesting, try not to attack any black-owned businesses. Try to protect black-owned businesses. You know, if somebody comes out of black-owned business with a bat or a rock or whatever, you know, I would definitely, you know, implore people to try to protect those businesses. You know what I mean? Because the black community is already as poor as poor as it as is. You know what I mean? But um, what else was I going to say? I think that's that's all I can think of right now. All I'm saying is that black people have been protesting peacefully for the longest. And whatever we do, we get nothing but disrespect. And we get, like, they, they won't acknowledge it. You know what I mean? Like, until now, the whole Black Lives Matter movement, you know, on white Twitter, they, they, they think that's a meme. They think that shit is funny. They make jokes about that. You know what I mean? Like, the recent situation where, with Doja Cat, you know, the phrase didn't do nothing. You know what I mean? Like, they would use that as like a meme. It's a joke. You know what I mean? So that's why people felt like they were so upset that they had to resort to violence in order to get their attention, get America's attention. And they finally have their attention. But I'm going to get into that later. Um, I have notes here. I'm just reading my notes because, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I say what I need to say and say it properly. Um, hang on. Yeah, and like I said, you know, um, you know, I saw the video, uh, you know, of George Floyd, you know, getting killed. I also saw the video of Ahmaud Arbery, you know, um, 
excuse me, that's my phone. Um, yeah, it was, it was some real graphic shit. Um, I'm, like, I'm used to seeing graphic shit, you know, I be on the internet all the time, I watch all types of crazy videos, but, um, I don't know, just seeing that, even though I'm so desensitized to so much stuff, you know, because of the internet and, you know, social media and shit, that's, that shit still really did hurt me. You know what I mean? Seeing a Mod Arbery literally getting chased down, you know, by those fucking white men and like getting shot and shit. You know what I mean? Like, I know I don't need to say this, but like if it, if it was a black man that was like chasing down a white boy, you know, with guns saying, oh, I thought he stole something like that, that, that nigga, his whole life would have been fucking over. You know what I mean? There would have been white people you know, advocating to give him the electric chair and shit. You know what I mean? Regardless if he was a former police officer or not. You know what I mean? Like, come on. And then, you know, the whole situation with George Floyd. You know what I mean? There's video evidence of, like, the officer having his knee on the dude's neck and, like, suffocating him while, like, two other officers were, like, pinning him down. And he was already in handcuffs. Like, I'm not going to get into that. I don't need to justify why that shit was wrong. Because I know it's wrong. You know what I mean? But even after that, you know, before the riots started popping off, popping off, or a little time after the riots started popping off, people were still putting in their two cents. You know, trying to say, oh, he was all right. Oh, I think, I think, who was it? I think it might have been the mayor or the governor of that state who said something like, oh, if you can talk, you can breathe. You know what I mean? I'm not even going to get into that because I don't need to justify why the fuck, you know, he shouldn't have had his fucking knee on somebody's neck when they were already in handcuffs. Um, what else? Yeah, like I said, you know, even, even after all that, you know, there's still people, you know, who would make jokes, you know, still people who would say all lives matter. You know what I mean? All of that is just extremely disrespectful. Um, you know, white people, you know, quote unquote, non-black POC. Me personally, I don't really like the term POC. You know, I don't like the idea of like lumping all brown people in one, using one term. Because I kind of feel like that puts white people as like, you know, the center of the universe. You know what I mean? There's all the non-white people, and then there's white people. I don't like that, so I don't really use that term. But um, I don't know what other term to use when referring to, you know, other, you know, other ethnicities as a whole. So I'm just saying non-black POC. Um, yeah, just non-black POC, um, white people, and even some black people who are just like, they don't give a fuck. They're not saying anything. They're not helping. They're just, you know, no fucks given. They just want to go go about their day like nothing fucking happened. You know what I mean? I don't know. Um, next thing I have on my list. How does social media react? How does... Okay. How does social media react? Um, yeah, when when I saw the, the, the video of a hard Arbery being murdered, um, like, I honestly, like... I thought, I didn't think people were going to react, you know, in the, to this extent, you know what I mean? Um, because there has been video evidence of several of the, you know, black men, black men and women, you know, being wrongfully, you know, murdered by the police. You know, you know, so when he died, I just assumed it would just be like another day, like, you know, just different day, same shit, you know, just another nigga dead, you know what I mean? Um, you know, of course, I still saw the thing. I still saw the video. But, um, yeah, I just thought, you know, I didn't think much of it. I thought they were going to go out, do their protest, and, you know, as usual, white people weren't going to give a fuck, and it would just be another nigga dead. But, um, you know, instead, it uh, sparked a... You know, a protest, the protest turned to a riot, 
you know, and now, you know, the riot is like a, you know, worldwide protest, a worldwide, worldwide riot. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, people reacted, you know, they did the donations, they did the hashtag Black Lives Matter and stuff. Um, I think I understand that the whole point of the Black Lives Matter, you know, situation is, you know, supposed to, you know, raise awareness. But, you know, as I said before, like, America is already aware. They just don't care. You know what I mean? So you just hopping on social media doing the hashtag Black Lives Matter, this, that, and the third. You know what I mean? Like, especially with the celebrities and shit. Like, they just, I don't know. I feel like they're just doing it for, like, brownie points. You know what I mean? They're just doing it because, like, it's just a trend. Which, you know, in a way isn't bad, I guess. Because, you know, if it wasn't a trend, you know, it would not have become a worldwide protest against police brutality, you know, directed at black people. And, you know, I know there are some, you know, Hispanic Americans who also get, you know, you know, get the same treatment, you know what I mean, because they perceive, you know, Latin Americans as like, you know, like Donald, Donald Trump said, oh, they're murderers and rapists and all that, which is not the fucking case, you know what I mean, I'm from Bronx, like, I, I'm just cool niggas, you know what I mean, needless to say, um, but yeah, um, uh, what was I saying again? Right, you know, just, I don't know, something about it just, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. You know what I mean? Because at first, a lot of people were kind of like ignoring the situation. A lot of celebrities in particular were just like ignoring the situation, which is why I kind of felt like it would just be, you know, a situation like, oh, it's another nigga dead, another protest, another riot, and then everything is going to go back to normal. But, you know, as things progressed, you know, celebrities started making their donations and, you know, you know, doing the hashtag Black Lives Matter and, you know, you know, uh, doing the black square that says Blackout Tuesday. Like, they started joining in, you know, on the, uh, on the trend. Like, it's just a trend to them, you know what I mean? They just want to maintain their followers, you know what I mean? Because immediately after them tweet, making all those tweets and posts and blah, 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 you know, they went right back to their you know, regularly scheduled bullshit, you know, promoting their products, buy this, buy that, you know what I mean, subscribe to this, you know, buy my shit, you know what I mean, promote my shit, you know what I mean, that's why, like, like I said, you know, I understand that it needed to be a trend in order to attract attention, you know what I mean, that's the whole point of a protest, is to attract attention, you know, and not just protesting in the streets, but I guess, you know, in some ways also protesting on the internet to let people know that these problems are happening. But just, you know, something about it just seems extremely disingenuous, you know what I mean? And it kind of just rubs me the wrong, the wrong way. Um, you know, you just making a read. You making, uh, you know, a tweet, a post, you know, saying this, that, and the third, like, that's not helping. You know what I mean? Unless you're out there protesting, like, you need to, like, make donations, you know, to the protesters to, you know, help post their bill. You know what I mean? Or make donations in any type of way, you know, to support, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, sign petitions, like, do something. Don't just sit on your ass and, you know, um... And just retweet shit and just, you know, think that makes you, you know, not racist or whatever. I'm going to move on to my next point. But I just kind of feel like, like, I kind of feel like black people are so used to having to defend themselves. You know what I mean? Which is why we have no problem with, you know, addressing things like race and inequality and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Because I feel like that's something that we have to teach. There's something that people in the black community, we have to talk about. Like, there's no way around it. Like, you have to talk about this shit. You have to address this shit. It's just like a part of our culture to acknowledge that this shit exists. You know what I mean? But with white people, you know, they're kind of seen as the default. 
you know, and uh, like they would have to step out of their comfort zone to address these situations where, you know, as black people, like this is just a part of our culture to discuss racism, you know what I mean? And like due to the fact that, you know, African Americans were cut off, you know, from uh, our culture, you know, our original culture in Africa, the culture that we developed in America is like all we have. So that's why we talk about it so much. You know what I mean? Because like, like, like that's our culture. That's all we know. You know what I mean? The Martin Luther King, the uh, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, you know, Harriet Tubman, um, um, Nat Turner. You know what I mean? Those, those are our people. Those are our heroes. That's all we know. We don't know anything about the religion or the culture or the, 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 you know, the social norms in Africa because we were taken away from that and forced to forget that when we were brought here as slaves. So that's why, you know, we have, like, in our culture, we address this shit so much and don't tolerate this shit. And I'm not saying that as an excuse. I'm just making an observation, you know. And I know that, you know, not all black people, you know, experience blatant, you know, racism, you know. Racism isn't, like, racism isn't somebody walking up dead to your face and calling you the N-word, you know what I mean? Like, it's more to it than that. Maybe I'm not expressing it right. Um, um, I made a video, I don't know if I said this earlier in this um, recording, but I made a video earlier about this shit, like, when the protests were first popping off, because I was, like, really anxious and depressed about the whole situation because you know every time i get on the internet you know it's a bunch of violent images and people saying like oh you know you have to do this you have to make a donation sign this petition if you don't do this you're not helping blah 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 which you know they're right you know they're absolutely right um you know as a black man you know as someone who you know has you know i, I got younger brothers, you know, younger sister, you know what I mean? That situation with Ahmaud Arbery, that situation with George Floyd, that could have easily been one of my family members. So it is very important, you know, to me to, you know, kind of try and, you know, help out in the best way that I can. So, you know, I'm not, you know, criticizing those people. I'm just saying, like, you know, just the whole situation, it just, like, it just really, you know, as far as my mental health, you know, and as far as emotionally, it was extremely taxing and it took a huge toll on me, um, which isn't really anything new, you know what I mean? I've, I'm not, you know, diagnosed or anything, like I'm, I've, I haven't been to a psychiatrist or a therapist and they're like, oh, you have this, this, and this, but just, you know, me experiencing, you know, this type of emotional, um, just me experiencing anxiety and depression, it really, it's not new for me, but just in this particular situation, I just felt like I wouldn't be able to properly get this shit off my chest until I do something, you know, and me making this video is me doing something. Um, also, I'm going to leave some links in the, um, you know, the description, um, links in the description to, uh, you know, for petitions and, you know, any ways that you can donate and help uh, the protesters, you know, that are fighting for, you know, equality and, uh, you know, just fighting to protect black lives. Um, yeah. Um, I made a video about this earlier, and um, I was kind of worried that it didn't, um, you know, what I was saying in the video, I was so, like, emotionally, you know, charged that I was worried that I might not have, you know, made my point or said things properly. You know, I didn't want to offend anyone. So, you know, like I said, I've been looking at my notes this whole time. I've been, you know, writing things down. Uh, you know, that could, um, 
that could be relevant relevant to um, the situation and trying to organize my thoughts, you know, to make sure that I say the right things and not, you know, come off as like a cool ass nigga or, you know, offend people. Um, basically, you know, I'm all in support, you know, of the protest. Um, you know, I support the protest, you know what I mean? Even the violent protest, you know what I mean? Because if it didn't turn to violent, like I said, it would have just been another nigga dead. You know what I mean? Nobody would have paid attention. You know what I mean? It would have just been swept under the rug, just like all the other situations. Um, but what I really wanted to address, I guess, at the end of this video was that, like, the reason, like, I see a lot of people trying to, you know, figure out how they can take action. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, and I kind of feel like, um, you know, due to the fact that we don't really have somebody who is like the leader, who is like the leader of the Black Lives Matter movement, I feel like because of that, you know, people are kind of like, all over the place trying to find ways to protest and you know finding ways to like help the protesters and stuff you know what i mean like back down the civil rights movement you know we had leaders you know not just martin luther king and malcolm x there were several other leaders you know what i mean not just the black black panther movement not just the nation of islam you know what i mean there were several other leaders you know, who would, like, make efforts and organize shit. But now, like, I feel like due to, because of social media, you know, where everyone's trying to make their opinion matter in every single situation, you know what I mean? Like, people are just, like, scrambling all over the place trying to, like, figure out what to do and how to help in this situation, you know what I mean? Myself included, like, I don't know what the fuck to do. You know what I mean? I can't protest. You know what I mean? Due to the fact that, like, I'm so far away from the protests that are happening in my state. You know what I mean? On top of the fact that, like, I have to go to work. You know what I mean? I can't risk getting arrested. If I get arrested, I can't pay. I can't work. I can't pay my fucking bills. You know, and on top of the fact, admittedly, that I am, you know, scared. You know what I mean? I go out there. The police beat the shit out of me. Like, I've been hearing all types of horror stories. I've been hearing people saying, like, oh, you know, there are white supremacists out there that are attacking black people. You know, one lady, I think, one post that I saw on Instagram where it was, like, a lady, she got attacked by someone with a knife that was, like, calling her the N-word. And, you know, there was a video of, like, some white boys, like, stomping out somebody. And, you know, and now I think, like, I saw another video where, like, there was a bunch of, like, white people, like, militarizing and, like, coming together to, like, with, like, bats and shit to, like, fight the, you know, fight the protesters, I guess, is what they call themselves doing. Like, it's just really chaos out there. So, um, I don't know, you know, admittedly, I am, you know, a little scared. Um... You know, even like, you know, when I take my Lyft ride from home, you know what I mean? Like, what if my Lyft driver is like a white dude or something? Like, what if he like, like, I don't know. What if he asks me like, hey, what do you think of the protests? And if I don't give him the answer that he wants to hear, like, you know, who knows how the fuck he might react? I don't know. Um... What else did I want to say? Yeah, another thing, like, during this time, like, I really, I would implore black people to, like, not, like, now, uh, now isn't the time to, you know, try and educate your, your, your white friends or your white significant other or, you know, your non-black POC friend, like, if they don't know, they don't want to know. Because the shit is everywhere. It's always been everywhere. And now it's, you know, more visible than ever. 
if they don't want to know, if they don't want to respect it, if there's talking all lives matter bullshit, yeah, you don't, don't, like, like, you're disappointing yourself. Like, they don't want to know. It's there. Like, it's blatantly there. It's always been there. It's always, this information has always been accessible to them. If they don't want to know, like, that's not your fault. Like, don't try to, you know, tax yourself emotionally just to, you know, explain the difference between water and oil to them. You know what I mean? That's not fair. That's not your responsibility. You know what I mean? If they're going to be ignorant, fuck them. You know what I mean? I'm sure there are a lot of other, you know, there are a lot of other, you know, I don't really like the idea of white allies, but there are, you know, some white people and non-black people who are protesting, who completely understand the situation. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, you know, hurt your feelings or waste your time trying to, you know, explain shit to people who don't give a fuck about the whole movement or don't give a fuck about black people or who just want to, you know, ignore that this shit is happening and just go about their day. You know what I mean? Fuck those people. You 100% do not have to explain shit to those fucking people. Especially in this situation where, like, shit is so wild and, like, you know, just black people in general being exposed to all this violence, you know, directed towards black people. You know what I mean? Like, this shit is just, like, it's not... Now is not the time for that, you know? So if they don't want to know, if they want to tweet all lives matter, if they want to be like, oh, well, I don't get it, you know, you don't have to explain to them. You know, just be like, fuck them, fuck them. Like, you want to you wanna be on your ignorant bullshit, fuck you. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, racism, racism isn't, isn't just something that hurts your feelings. Like, this shit is, like, traumatic. You know what I mean? Especially for the people who are out there, you know, fighting for black lives. And especially for the people who have experienced racism. You know, regardless of how passive, aggressive, you know, the the comments may be, you know, being discriminated against or being disrespected, you know, just because of your ethnicity, just because of your culture, you know, just because of your nationality, like, that shit is, like, traumatic, you know what I mean? It's a fucked up thing, you know what I mean? And to be experiencing that shit for generations... Like, it, it, like, that just piles on top of itself. Like, it, it just makes it even more traumatic and more, you know, emotionally taxing. Um, yeah, and I say all that to say this, like, well, not, yeah, just, I just wanted to close out, you know, my comments on the situation with, like, you know, just remember to all the people who are protesting and to all the people at home, you know, remember what you're out there fighting for. You know what I mean? Remember what you're out there fighting for. Um, and like I said, due to the fact that we don't have any black leaders that are like, you know, trying to guide the situation and, you know, make sense of all this, you know, pent up, like, anger and emotion and just outrage, you know what I mean? Just remember that, you know, that you're fighting for black lives and specifically, like, that, like, I feel like, like, the protesters should, like, start making demands. I think now is the time to start making demands. Like, we want this, this, and this, and until we get this, you know, the, these protests, these riots, they will not end. You know what I mean? And I don't know, I was hoping like, you know, like I said, we don't have any black leaders, but maybe some black politicians, black celebrities could like, you know, grab the mic and, you know, you know, talk their shit or come together and come to a decision like, okay, what are, you know, what are our demands? What do we want? What do, you know, how can we make this better? You know, moving forward, what can we do to stop this shit and protect the black community and help the black community? Um, what I think we should do, like what I think um, our demand should be, I believe that, um, of course, you know, the people who killed George Floyd 
all four of them, not just the white dude who had his knee on his neck, all four of them should be charged with murder. Uh, the, the white guy who had his knee on his neck, he was charged with third degree. I definitely believe he should be charged with at least second degree murder. And uh, I guess the other three of them, they could be charged, you know, with third degree, I guess. Um, I don't really know how, you know, legal shit works, you know, so I don't know. But just, I think they should be arrested and sent to jail because all of them were complacent in the murder of George Floyd. So I think the four officers that contributed to George Floyd's murder should be arrested and sent to jail, you know, charged with second degree murder, at least. Um, of course, I don't know the situation with Ahmaud Arbery, but I definitely believe that those people who I think weren't even officers, like they were just trying to make a citizen's arrest. I don't know, just, but yeah, I think those people definitely should be arrested and charged. I, they should be charged with fucking first degree without a doubt. And um, the people who killed Breonna Taylor, um, I don't really know about legal shit. You know, they said they had a warrant, but they were still at the wrong house. You know what I mean? I understand the boyfriend pulled out a gun, blah, blah, blah. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to explain myself. Like, I know that shit was wrong. Um, they should also be taken to court. There's also a recent um, incident with uh, a transgender man, transgender man by the name of Tony McDade. Um, they should, uh, the police officers that killed Tony McDade, they should also be taken to court. So basically, all the police officers who were involved in, you know, the unlawful murder of. You know, African Americans in recent history, you know, should be taken to court and should be charged with murder. Um, on top of that, I would advocate for the, uh, I guess, reform or revision of, um, you know, the process of becoming, you know, a, a police officer. I think the whole process needs to be revised, and I think it needs to be, you like, more strict. Like, they need to, like, they need to, like, make sure that, you know, all these officers are, like, you know, like, I really feel like some of these are not just racist. I really think, like, they're just, like, unhinged and just, <clears throat> excuse me, I really think that they're just unhinged and extremely ignorant and just so I definitely would advocate for um you know the entire police force being like revised, revamped and you know reformed, you know, and making it more difficult to become a police officer. You know what I mean? Um because I think I saw a post where like like, in order to become a police officer, I think you need less than, like, 500 hours of training while, you know, becoming other, you know, you know, going into other professions, it takes well over, like, 700 to well over 1,000 hours. You know what I mean? So, I definitely think that, um, you know, America needs to have a universal, like all over America, not just, oh, in this state we do this, in that state we do that, in all states. America should have a strict training program and, you know, strict, um, what do you call it? Strict requirements for their uh, police officers. You know, so to reiterate, um, I, I, I think we should arrest all the, um, all the police officers who were involved in unlawful murders of African Americans, arrest them, charge them with second degree murder, at least second degree murder, and, uh, we should, um, advocate immediately, immediately for the, uh, 
I mean, for America to have, you know, a nationwide revision of the police force with stricter requirements and uh, and more thorough police training. That's what I think, you know, our, uh, you know, what our demand should be from America. Um, yeah, I've been talking for a while. That's all. That's all that I think that I have to say. Um, like I said, I had a video earlier of me, you know, venting when the shit first popped off. You know, I'm gonna upload that video at like I'm probably gonna like edit it to like be at the end of this. But um, yeah, and like I said, you know, I'm gonna try and leave some shit in the description so you can donate and you know sign your petitions to help out. You know, your brothers and sisters on the front line, you know, who are getting hurt. And, um, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Hello to everyone um, watching. Um, first, let me change my weapon. I said I don't like um, hunting horns with wide range because I kind of feel like they're, um, what you call it? Like it's a lot of work. It's hard to like balance, you know, keeping your enemies buffed and doing damage and healing your enemies. But um, I just felt like creating this build because I thought it'd be fun. Okay. Um, let's just get right into the uh, subject of this video. Um, that was my phone. I just went off. Ignore that. I'm gonna go ahead and join somebody in the guiding lands. As a matter of fact, should I? Because I don't know. Join, join the guiding lands. Okay. Guess this one since okay <sighs> okay so basically um I am making this video regarding you know the current events that are happening you know all over America you know people are protesting you know the murder of George Floyd um Breonna Taylor um Ahmaud Arbery and um Hang on, let me get the other person's name. I apologize. Give me a moment. I'm checking my phone real quick. I want to make sure that I, you know, say the person's name. Um, Okay, um, pardon me, I apologize, um, uh, yeah, I was gonna address the situation with people protesting the murder of, um, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and, um, the murder of Tony McDade, who was, um, fatally shot, uh, on Wednesday by a police officer in Tallahassee, Florida. That's what I'm reading right now off of um, what I searched on the internet. Um, I don't really know a lot about um, this person, Tony McDade. All I know is that it was a black transgender man. 
Um, but, you know, regardless of the person's gender, you know, it's still a black man, it's still a black person. You know what I mean? And I just wanted to, you know, give respect to that person as well, you know, because I feel like, you know, a lot of this stuff kind of like just, you know, gets forgotten. You know what I mean? I understand people are upset about George Floyd, but I just want to make sure, you know, that I address all the people that, you know, lost their lives, you know, at the hands of police brutality and whatnot. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, as you can see, I am black. Well, I mean, I feel like that was a stupid thing to say. It's just a video game, like, anybody could create a black character, but, um, in real life, I am black, um, you know, I'm a descendant of, I'm of African descent, I'm of, you know, you know, African slave descent, you know, I'm African American, um, or black American, you know, some people prefer to use, you know, certain terms, to describe the ethnicity, you know, I have no problem with that. But just to make it clear, you know, I am black. And, um, I just want to say that, like, you know, seeing all this stuff happening with, you know, people protesting and stuff, and, um, you know, police, you know, throwing tear gas at them and macing them, and, you know, people getting beat up, shot with rubber bullets, shot with, uh, I think they're called, like, pepper bullets or some shit. Um... Like, at first, honestly, you know, I thought this was going to be like every other, you know, Black Lives Matter protest, you know what I mean? People would uh, protest, they would, um, you know, try their best to get their point across, point across, point across, but, um, you know, like every other Black Lives Matter protest, you know, most people would just like, ignore it or just be like, oh, well, you know, he deserved, people would say, like, mostly white people, they were like, oh, well, he deserved to die because he should have did this and he should have did that, and, you know, they'll go, they'll, like, search up some old shit saying, oh, you know, back in 1994, he did a bad thing, so that just justifies, um, you know, him getting shot in the street or whatever, whatever. You know, I thought it was just going to be you know, some typical shit, you know what I mean, um, I had watched the video of, you know, George Floyd being killed, um, and I don't know if I'm, I think I am desensitized to it, I feel like I'm a des desensitized to a lot of stuff, you know what I mean, it takes a lot to like, and I'm not trying to like say that like this shit is normal, well it kinda is, but it shouldn't be normal, and like when I saw it, it was, pretty graphic, it was pretty like jarring to see, but like a lot of, there's a lot of shit where um, you actually see like black men being killed by the police, so, and whenever people saw that, specifically white people, whenever white people saw that, they would always come up with an excuse saying, oh, he should have did this, he should have did that, let me hear this dude real quick, but yeah, so I just assumed like, people were going to watch it and just be like, oh, well, whatever, he should have did this, he should have did that, and try and pull up some dirt from his past to try and incriminate him and, uh, you know, make him seem like he's a bad guy that deserves to get killed by the police. Um, but yeah, uh, needless to say, you know, people, you know, all over America, have been taking this situation, you know, very seriously, and understandably so. Um, excuse me, I'm, I'm not good at multitasking. Um,
After this, I'm going to just go back to the um, hub because I'm not really good at multitasking and I'm really feeling very anxious right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave, like, I'm just feeling not invested in that right now, but, um, yeah, let me start over, I apologize, um, okay, um, as I was saying, um, I wanted to, you know, address the murder of, you know, these four black people, like I said, it was, uh, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and, um, Tony McDade in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, as I said, I kind of felt like I've been, become, like, desensitized to the shit, which is not a good thing, you know what I mean, because, you know, black people being killed in the street should not be, like, the daily norm. You know what I mean? But like with social media and everyone having access to, uh, you know, a camera to record on their phone, 
like you just you see all types of like crazy shit of just you know very violent things and i don't feel like i'm exclusively desensitized to that i feel like i'm ex- i'm just desensitized to a lot of things but i feel like you know that's just like personal stuff i don't need to get into that but um yeah like i said i assume that you know because there are several other, inc- other incidents where um you know a black person being killed on camera had been caught and even after that you know people would say oh you know, well let me let me stop saying people white people specifically white people and pretty much anyone who isn't black you know white people and non-black people will be like oh you know i don't support black lives matter he should have did this he should have did that and even some black people you know if you like do your research even some black people who don't support black lives matter and say all types of disrespectful ignorant stuff you know directed at you know the victim of police brutality and stuff like that so i kind of assume like this situation it would have just been like it would have been just like any other you know what i mean like while all those black people were killed like for little to nothing for just minding their business, you know what I mean, for just, you know, being in their homes, you know, playing video games with their nephew or whatever, you know what I mean, like, just so many incidents where, like, black people have literally just died for nothing, and non-black people, especially white people who just, like, completely, blatantly turn a blind eye to that shit and just disrespect, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter movement and just, like, don't give a fuck basically. You know what I mean? They want to return to their regularly programmed bullshit. You know what I mean? And just like, like they're afraid to, I like, I don't know, like I didn't grow up around white people. You know what I mean? I grew up in a majority black neighborhood. Um, you know, because I was raised in Atlanta, but I was, I'm from New York. Like, I don't like telling people that I'm from the South. You know, I like to tell them that I'm from New York, but I, I, you know, I haven't, you know, I haven't, I didn't live, I, most of my life I've lived in the South. You know, only, you know, a fraction of my life, maybe eight years, I've lived in New York. But like, you know, and when I was in the South, it was all black. Like everywhere, you know, you go to the store, it's black cash, cashiers. You know what I mean? You go to the movie theater, it's a bunch of black people, just all black. All black. Um, the part of the South that I live in right now is kind of, I kind of feel like it's getting gentrified. But, you know, that's not relevant right now. Um, and, you, you know, when I was in New York, I'm from Bronx. Like, you know, if you know the Bronx, it's like it's all black people and Hispanic people. You know what I mean? Um... So I'm not used to really being around white people. I don't know about white culture, but I just kind of feel like, like just from my, you know, basic understanding, I kind of feel like they like really, I don't know. I feel like black people are so used to just defending themselves and asserting themselves and, you know, talking about race. You know what I mean? Like they're so used to talking, like we're so used to talking about race. We're so used to, being in situations where we have to assert ourselves and defend ourselves, you know, whether it be, you know, you know, from the police, whether it be from, I thought someone was at my door, whether it be from the police, whether it be from, you know, someone, you know, I guess on the internet who is like disrespecting the Black Lives Matter movement or, you know, making racist jokes about black people. Or whether it be even even from our own people, you know what I mean? Us, you know, roasting each other, cracking jokes, you know, depending on what neighborhood you're in, you might, you know what I mean, have to, like, fight a nigga or two, you know what I mean? Depending on what neighborhood you're in, you might, like, witness, you know, shootings and shit, you know what I mean? Um, You know, I know in Chicago, they're having a real, you know, a lot of problems with that, um, you know, Chicago, Detroit, you know, I guess, you know, certain parts of California, you know, Long Beach. Like, we're used to just being, like, strong and, like, asserting ourselves and voicing our opinion. Well, I kind of feel like, you know, 
white people they're kind of just used to you know I don't know just like being they're used to being the default they're used to being passive they're not used to you know having to address things like race you know it's just like not a part of their culture and I'm not saying that as an excuse I'm just saying using that as an observation you know what I mean because I'm not one of these dudes that's like you know into the whole white ally thing or into the whole you know this white person is invited to the cookout like honestly I kind of feel like that's like cone shit really you know what I mean you know um I have well, whatever. Basically, what I'm trying to say is just, you know, a lot of white people and non-black people, like, are just blatantly, like, all over, you know, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Like, it's like they're pretending like this shit literally is not happening. Like, a lot of YouTubers that I follow that aren't black, you know, a lot of, you know, just a lot of people just blatantly just ignoring this this shit that's happening like america is literally on fire like it's literally on fire you know what i mean niggas out there protesting getting pepper sprayed tear gas and, and they're literally like just pretending like the shit is not happening you know what i mean and it's just so crazy to me that's so it's just so rude and blatantly like you're choosing to be ignorant when you do shit like that you know what i mean and like i understand that some people you know they want to they don't want to talk about, you know, stuff like this. They just want to, you know, they want to be happy. They want to think positive thoughts. They want to go back to, you know, living their their um, normal life. You know what I mean? They're not brave enough to, you know, confront people or not brave enough to address these problems. But, like, when something of this scale, like, I saw there was some shit on Instagram. I don't know if it's real or not because I feel like there's a lot of he say, she say stuff going on. And I'm not saying that in in regards to the to the black people that were I'm I'm saying in regards to the protests because there's a lot of stuff going on that I saw like on Instagram alone people saying that oh you know there were police officers and who were in disguise and white supremacists who were in disguise that started the riot you know and I'm not here to spread rumors but just like so much stuff is going on and they just like all these people and all these non-black people that i follow on instagram twitter like they're not saying anything they're blatantly ignoring it hang on let me see something real quick i'm looking at my phone um it's just crazy man like it's just mad disrespectful it's so selfish and disrespectful really that's how i feel you know what i mean like i know some people are like at least you know, tweeting hashtag Black Lives Matter and they're going about their day. Like, at least do that, man. You know what I mean? But it's that some people are just like, you know, it's like that scene from The Wizard of Oz. Like, oh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Like, that's really how I feel. That's how, that's how they're acting. Like, all these non-black people that I follow, they're just like ignoring that shit. You know what I mean? And I guess, like I said, I'm not used to growing up around white people. I am used to growing up you know, I do grow up around, you know, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans, you know, Afro Latinos, you know, I am Muslim, so I'm used to being around Muslims, like I'm used to being around all those types of people. Yeah, I just, I don't know, man, like, you know, people tweeting all lives matter and all that, like, it's just, like, I've never really been into social media, you know what I mean, like, honestly, like, back in the, I'm rambling, I really am, I'm not getting to the point, but just, like, a lot of this stuff is, like, just, like, I'm not trying to make this about me, because it's not. But just a lot of this stuff, like, has just really, I'm extremely anxious. Like, I'm not, you know, medically diagnosed with anxiety or depression or nothing, but just I'm really not feeling well right now. You know what I mean? And I haven't been feeling well for, you know, a while, maybe even a decade. 
you know, since my, you know, early preteens. But, um, yeah, I just feel like this situation is just, like, very stressing, you know? And just to have, like, so many people blatantly ignoring it is just, it's just so disrespectful. You know what I mean? Not just to the people who were murdered, but just to, like, the people who run the risk of being murdered. You know, the black people who run the risk of being murdered. You know, the the protesters who run the risk of getting hurt or getting killed. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, like, so many people on the internet who just, they just don't give a fuck. They're just, you know, going about their day like nothing happened. Like, you know, who cares? I'm going to promote my bullshit. You know what I mean? Buy this product. Buy, buy that product. You know, it's just sad. It really is. And um, what, what was the point that I was getting at? I don't know. Um, Basically, all I'm saying is, like, this shit has really got me kind of on edge. Um, I have to go to work today. I work the night shift. Um, there's been a curfew placed, you know, in my um, in my area, and I'm kind of worried because I've seen like videos of police literally like pulling up on niggas in cars and literally snatching them out of the car for no fucking reason, you know, just just because of the protests, trying to blame it on all black people. Just dead ass and violate niggas for no reason. You know what I mean? I have to go to work. Like real shit, I work at a hospital. So I really hope that shit, I, I highly doubt because I gotta take the highway. Like, I gotta take the highway straight from my house to um the hospital that I work at. And um Yeah, and, and I take a lift. I don't even drive. So, you know, hopefully like, I don't think, like, the hospital that I work at is nowhere near, nowhere near the um the protest, but I just really hope, you know, police, they be acting funny sometimes, so I just really hope, you know, nothing, nothing stupid happens, you know, and I know some of my co-workers, they gotta use the fucking train, you know, I really, you know, I really hope that they're okay, um, and by the way, I'm not like a nurse or nothing, I just like wash dishes at the hospital, wash dishes, take out the trash, um, mop the floors, sweep the floors, you know, clean the dishwasher machine. But, you know, nonetheless, I work at a hospital. And, um, yeah, this shit has just really got me anxious and kind of depressed over all this shit. Um, I'm going to try and leave, you know, a link because I think that people have been circulating stuff about, you know, how you can, the hotlines and stuff where, you know, for all the young black people that are, you know, experiencing this shit, you know, how you can try and, you know, I guess maintain good mental health, you know, during this situation because seeing all this violence, you know, directed at black people, you know, can be very jarring, I guess you know, very traumatizing. Like, I think I remember, like, you know, I apologize if it seems like I'm spreading rumors, but this is just something that I saw on Instagram where the young lady that um, had um, uh, filmed, you know, George Floyd's murder, um, like she said, she was, like, mad traumatized. I don't remember from what. I think she might have traumatized, like, Maybe people harassing her for uploading it or maybe traumatized from just watching him die. But just, she said she was like extremely fucking traumatized by this whole situation. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I'm gonna, um, go ahead and, Yeah, I'm sorry, I was looking at my Twitter, okay. But yeah, um, I forgot what I was saying. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to leave a link to one of those things that, you know, was supposed to help, you know, young black people, you know, with their mental health, you know, during this fucking, you know, first it was the pandemic. Now, you know, you know, another innocent black person was killed by the police. You know, now there's rioting, you know, so, you know, so for anyone, I know a lot of people that I follow, you know, Instagram are like really, like, especially black people. I mostly follow black people, but like, they're like really hurt by this shit and really like, just like depressed and shit and just sad and angry about this shit. So I'm going to try and, um, you know, leave links for that. And, uh, another thing, um was that, you know, I try to, I try to, you know, I consider myself as, you know, uh, a pro-black activist, you know. Um, you know, uh, I try to support, you know, black-owned businesses to, you know, help create some wealth in the black community, you know, create, you know, help create like generational wealth. So, you know, it, it might, I might not see it in my lifetime, but, you know, um, you know, I guess just, you know, promote uh, black people in power, I guess, who aren't like, you know, shoeshine and cool ass niggas, but promote black people and promote black businesses, you know, to kind of, you know, um, yeah, just to, you know, make a safe space for black people where we don't have to, like, you know, defend or constantly defend ourselves and, you know, explain our whole history, because I really don't think that's fair. You know, a lot of people, like, you don't have, I don't feel like you have to explain yourself to white, white people, you know, and, um, like I said, I, I grew up around mostly black people, you know, I don't really have any white friends, I think I had one white friend when I was, like, in first grade, but other than that, like, I don't really fuck with white people, not, like, on some racist shit, like, you know, if I meet a white person, I'll treat them with, you know, unconditional respect until, you know, they start acting out of pocket, you know, whether it's something racist or something just blatantly disrespectful that has nothing to do with race. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, like, I don't think it's fair for, like, if you have any white friends, any white, you know, any white people that you, uh, that you fuck with, like, you, you don't have to explain yourself to them. You know what I mean? Like, if they don't want to, if they don't want to know, if they don't want to care, like, they're choosing, they're making that choice to be ignorant. They're, they're making that choice to be ignorant. You know what I mean? This doesn't affect their community. It doesn't affect their people. So they're just going to not care and demonize the people, you know, demonize the people who do care and try and, you know, make smart-ass remarks, you know, on some holier-than-thou shit. You don't have to explain yourself to them. You know what I mean? Like... And this time, I really feel more comfortable, like, just surrounding myself, you know, listening to black, you know, artists, you know, black people who create music, you know, watching, you know, black television shows, because just, like, I know it kind of sounds weird, but I just, like, as of right now, I just, I don't want to, like, see any white people, I don't want to interact with any white people, I don't want to, you know, I just... Because just thinking, looking at them, just like seeing them, you know, all happy, going about their day, pretending like nothing happening, when shit is like really going down, it's just like, it's infuriating. It really is. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that, like, you should like, you know, confront them or attack them. Like, that's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that, you know, people are doing that because they're not, but just like, it's just infuriating to see that. So, like, I'm just like, as of right now, I'm just, like, detaching myself from all that bullshit, you know what I mean? I don't have to, I don't feel the need to explain myself or explain the situation to white people, you know what I mean? No one at work has, you know, no white people at work has really, like, you know, said anything about it. But, um, 
if they do, I'm not even gonna fucking engage with them. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just be like, yo, like, don't ask me. Like, mind your fucking business. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not even gonna, you know, risk hurting my own feelings by trying to explain the difference between water and oil to those people. So, like, if they don't want to know, fuck them. You know what I mean? Fuck them. Um, what else did I want? Oh, yeah. Like, like I was saying, I try to, you know, promote black businesses. I buy from black businesses, you know, and I promote black people in power who, you know, aren't coon-ass niggas, you know, who aren't drunk on power and just want to, you know, use their power to attain white privilege for themselves and live happily ever after, only benefiting themselves. You know, I buy from black businesses, you know, I buy, you know, hair care products. I got, a, like, a short afro in real life that I'm trying to, like, grow out to get a big 70s afro. You know, I buy, you know, I buy from, like, black-owned um, skincare, you know, skincare companies, you know, you know, like, uh, facial cleansers, and facial toners, and, you know, organic soaps and stuff. And I say all this to say, like, um, I'm trying, like, this thing has made me realize that, you know, being pro-black isn't, you know, a passive thing, you know, and I'm trying to, you know, do more and promote, you know, do, take more action rather than just sitting on my ass, you know, retweeting shit, because I feel like that's what a lot of celebrities are doing. Some, I, I, I know there are some celebrities who like physically went down there to protest with them and you know thank you to those celebrities you know for really you know spreading love and trying to you know protest george floyd's murder um but yeah like a lot of celebrity they just put like they're they're reblogging they're tweeting they're just like oh hashtag black lives matter i can't believe this and then go back to their regularly programmed bullshit you know what I mean? And, like, that's not being pro-black. Like, activism is not passive. It's, like, active. Like, you have to do something. You know what I mean? And although I am, you know, trying to, you know, support, you know, black people in power and support black-owned businesses, um, I feel like I need to do more. You know, I can't go down to protest because... Honestly, I'm like nervous, like I'm scared, because like what if I get arrested? Who the fuck is going to bail me out? I know they have, you know, some things circulating saying like, oh, if you get arrested, call this number, which I'm going to try to leave in the description as well. But, um, yeah, if you get, I mean, if you get arrested, protest and call, you know, such and such number. And, you know, I'm going to leave that in the description. But, um, yeah, like what if I get arrested? Like who the fuck is going to bail me out? You know what I mean? They can't bail everybody out because a lot of niggas are getting arrested. Um, you know what I mean? Like, how the fuck am I paying my bills if I get arrested? But, um, what else? Yeah, I just, I feel like I want to do more. Like, this whole situation is, and this whole situation and how, you know, Celebrities are responding to this shit. They're just tweeting such and such and just going about their business, not giving a, not giving a fuck. Continuing to promote their makeup and their this and their that, buy their products, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just feels disingenuous. You know what I mean? Because like, I don't know about them, but like for me, like this shit is like really wild. Like it's really fucking wild. And they're just going about their perfect little lives and their fucking mansions. You know, promoting their businesses so they can make millions of dollars. You know what I mean? It's really fucked up. You know what I mean? It really got me feeling some type of way. You know what I mean? Just retweeting shit isn't enough. You know, activism is active. It is not, you know, passive. You can't just sit on your ass and retweet shit. You can't just sit on your ass and buy shit. You gotta, like, do something. You know what I mean? So... You know, me making this video is my attempt at doing something. I know I haven't uploaded any videos in a while, not that anyone cares because I don't have any fucking subscribers or viewers. But I just wanted to put this out there to just, like, get some shit off my chest, you know, before I go to work today. 
Um, what else? Yeah, this is me doing something. You know, I'm going to leave some links for what you can donate to. I don't have a lot of money right now, but I'm going to try and see if I can donate. You know what I mean? Um, because like I said, I've been taking a lot of Uber rides and Lyft rides to, to work and back. And that has been like, it costs a lot. It's been like I'm almost broke right now. But, um, yeah, I'm going to try to see maybe if I can donate like at least a dollar or ten dollars or whatever. And, you know, I'm going to leave all that shit in the description. Um, you know, and, you know, I'm not trying to like pocket watch niggas or nothing. You know, I'm not pocket watching niggas. I'm not telling niggas what to do. You know what I mean? Like, do whatever the fuck you want. Like I said, I'm not going to argue with niggas. If you don't want to do nothing, if you want to sit on your ass and just retweet, cool. You know, I don't give a fuck. If you believe that, you know, Black Lives Matter is bullshit, cool, fuck you. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? But, like, I'm doing this to do my part, you know, as a black man to make, you know, this world safer for, you know, the younger black man and black women in my family. You know, my little brother, you know, my cousins, you know, my little sister, all that. You know what I mean? Because, like, because, like, that shit with George Floyd, that could have easily been, you know, my little brother. It could have been my uncles. It could have it been anybody in my family. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I just want to try and do something. You know what I mean? And on top of that, I want to also, you know, try and, like, I celebrate Kwanzaa. You know what I mean? And during Kwanzaa, I try to, like, you know, get my immediate family together to, like, you know, we, you know, we hang up the Pan-African flag, we got the the whole Kinara, we light the candles, you know, I try to watch, you know, documentaries, you know, on, you know, black activists and, you know, all types of shit, you know what I mean? I try to, you know, watch, you know, movies that were created by black people for black people, you know what I mean? I try to do stuff like that, but I want to you know, try and have more conversations with my family, especially my younger brothers and my little sister. I want to have, like, more conversations regarding this shit because, um, you know what I mean? I wouldn't want them to, like, you know, grow up being cone-ass niggas. You know what I mean? Because they didn't really have the upbringing that I had, even though we're related, you know, and we're only, you know, we're only, like, I'm only a couple years younger than them. I'll be older than them, maybe like 10 years, maybe, I don't know, sometimes some, like my, one of my younger brothers, I think I might be like 10 years older than him, like eight, maybe eight years older than him, I don't know. One of my younger brothers, I'm like three years older than them, but I'm, yeah, just, they didn't have the upbringing that I had, you know, my father, you know, taking me to the Million Man March, you know, watching documentaries with me, you know, me going to you know, all black masters, you know, growing up every Friday going to Juma and everyone at the masjid is like black. Like they didn't grow up with that. You know what I mean? Um they didn't grow up with that. So I wanna try and like enforce that into them, you know, so they don't end up being like, you know, ignorant people or cool ass or nothing like that. You know what I mean? And um Yeah, in addition to the fact that, like, there's no real father figure in the house, you know what I mean? It's just me. You know, I'm helping my moms, like, pay the rent and shit. Um, so, you know. And, you know, I'm kind of reclusive. Like, you know, I guess, as you may have guessed, like, I don't, I'm a very soft-spoken person. You know, I try to avoid, um, confrontation, you know. I just... You know, a lot of times I just isolate myself and ignore people. But, you know, this whole situation, well, even before this situation, I've been trying to work on those flaws. But even, you know, after this whole situation, I want to, like, become a better person. You know what I mean? Not just as a black man, but just as a person in general. You know what I mean? I want to be more assertive. I want to be more confident. 
You know what I mean? I want to be the person that I fantasize about being. You know what I mean? I don't want that just to be a fantasy. I want to, you know, bring that shit to, to life. You know what I mean? I want to be the person that, you know, has the microphone and is talking that real shit. You know what I mean? I want to educate myself on, you know, things that relate to the black community and black people. You know what I mean? And, um... I guess, I don't know, I guess kind of being consistent with this YouTube shit could help me, you know, do that. Not everything that I um, upload is going to be about race. Sometimes it might be, sometimes it might not. But, um, yeah, you know, maybe if I learn something new or if I, you know, make progress. Excuse me, that's my phone. If I learn something new or if I feel like I've made progress... You know, with my efforts, I'll definitely upload it and, like, share it, you know, over YouTube. And, like I said in my last video, like, I'm not doing this, you know, to, like, win a popularity contest or no shit like that. Like, I don't care if I get views. I don't care if I get subscribers. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm just doing this because, like I said, I want to, like, I want to abandon my lazy habits, abandon all my bad habits, and just, you know, work on me. And become a better person, be more consistent, be more, you know, just become a better person and not just let that, not just let me becoming a better person be a fantasy. Like, I want to do better, I want to learn things, you know what I mean? I want to become more intelligent, you know what I mean? I want to read more, you know what I mean? All of these things are things that I used to do, but, you know, get the job and all types of personal stuff happening, it just, like, drained the motivation out of me but like with this whole shit that's popping off like i really want to do better you know and become a better person you know for my family for myself and for you know the betterment of the black community as a whole um and like i said you know activism is active not passive you know what i mean um what else that i want to say excuse me that was my phone What else did I want to say? I don't know. I'll go back to the guiding lines. If I think of something else to say, I'll say it.